New Zealand's demographic, a large po rural population, distinct ethnic groups and ageing population all create challenges to equitable and effective healthcare. A quick look at New Zealand's population pyramid shows this. It's predicted by 2031, 20 to 22 percent of the population will be aged 65 or more. Comparing this to the 14 percent in 2011, and recognising the increasing likelihood of non-communicable diseases with age, the burden on the healthcare system becomes apparent. And New Zealand is not alone in facing the challenges of a rise in non-communicable diseases due to an ageing population and changing lifestyles around the world. Worldwide, in 2016 alone, 24 million people died from ischemic heart disease, stroke or cancer, making up 42% of total deaths. The statistics speak for themselves, so much so that one of the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals is to reduce deaths from non-communicable diseases, or NCDs, by a third. So, how can we improve the treatment of non-communicable disease? Nanomedicine is the use of particles on the nanoscale for the treatment of disease. More specifically, it can be used for the early detection and treatment of NCDs like cancer. As well as improving prognosis, early detection is key for um, effective treatment and is up to four times cheaper too, according to studies conducted in developed countries. This, let's take a specific example of how nanomedicine can help New Zealand's healthcare system. This map was taken from the National Breast Screening Unit's quarterly reports, and it shows the screening rates for an eligible Māori woman. In only two regions are they at the target 70%. It also highlights the trends of low screening levels for women in rural areas and in areas of high socioeconomic deprivation. These women, not reached by the screening programme, who develop breast cancer, are 3.79 times more likely to develop cancer and have it diagnosed at an advanced or metastatic stage compared to those covered by the programme. So what can be done to improve the screening rates for these women and create a more effective system to cope with the ageing population? The answer is nanomedicine. Liquid biopsies are an exciting new innovation for early detection of cancer and work by detecting circulating tumour cells, or CTCs. These are found in the blood of cancer patients, but in early stage cancer they're at very low concentrations. Using nanomedicine, it's possible to detect CTCs at concentrations of only 0.001%. They are less intrusive than mammograms, more flexible, can be operated from most medical practices and can work with Māori health providers, reducing barriers to screening for many women. But how do liquid biopsies work? Um, there are two possible techniques to achieve this. Positive enrichment targets the CTCs themselves and uses magnetic nanoparticles that bind to the CTCs and then uses a magnet to separate them from other cells in the solution. Building on this, the agnostic nanomedicine aims to combine diagnosis and therapy into one procedure, and so researchers have developed nanoparticles with a magnetic core, gold shell, and fluorescent properties that can be used to detect and then kill cancerous cells, as the high photothermal properties of gold mean that when exposed to a laser, it will heat up enough to kill the cells. The second technique is negative enrichment, removing non-target cells. To do so, blood is passed through a geometric geometrically activated surface interaction chip. This is a small chip with an asymmetrical herringbone pattern that creates turbulence in the liquid as it passes through, increasing the cells exposed to the surface of the chip, which are coated with antibodies that bind to the white blood cells, leaving just the CTCs behind. This is assuming, of course, that the larger red blood cells have already been removed. The advantage of this technique is that it is less specific, so it can remove CTCs from multiple cancers, and then they can then be tested for. The simplest applications for nanomedicine are in chemotherapy. Smart nanoparticles can be used for targeted drug delivery as they respond to stimuli. This could be internal stimuli like a change in pH or external stimuli like a change in temperature from a targeted laser. Redu this will improve chemotherapy by reducing side effects from not... Um, nanoparticles can also be used to increase the circular half-life of drugs, um, increasing efficacy without increasing dosages. And cancer is not the only NCD that can be used, uh, to, uh, that can be treated more effectively with nanomedicine. A recent study from the University of Otago predicted a 40% rise in strokes in the next decade. Nanomedicine can be used to deliver drugs to the brain through the blood-brain barrier, either helping to break down clots for ischemic strokes or to help clotting in hemorrhagic strokes. In cardiovascular disease, Nanomedicine nanoparticles can also be used for a more accurate and earlier diagnosis as they bind to plaque or clots, making them more visible in an MRI. There is also a study underway that uses nanoparticles to detect the presence of MPO, 
an enzyme present at the onset of atherosclerosis, but before a visible buildup of plaque. Nanoparticles can also be used to break down uh, plaque. For the 240,000 diabetics in New Zealand, nanomedicine is behind the development of controlled release insulin, as well as the creation of synthetic islets, cells that release um, insulin in the pancreas. An aging population also means a rise in neurodegenerative disease, with 170,000 new cases predicted by 2050. One of the biggest barriers in treating neurodegenerative disease is the blood-brain barrier. This is a selectively permeable membrane that separates the central nervous system from the rest of the blood in the body and is capable of detecting most foreign particles. By using a variety of nanoparticles, such as liposomes, scientists have been exploring how nanoparticles can carry other drugs through to the blood-brain barrier, protecting neurons for Parkinson's growth and even attacking the buildup of A beta plaque for Alzheimer's patients. To conclude, nanomedicine can help early diagnosis of cancer and cardiovascular disease, treat cancer, stroke and diabetes and cardiovascular disease, which are among New Zealand's leading causes of death, increase equity in the healthcare system for different ethnic groups, and help use the New Zealand healthcare population cope with the ageing population, contributing to the United Nations Sustainable Development Goal, ensure healthy lives for all at all ages. Thank you.